welcome back to Fusion Friday for Woodworkers. Today we're going to have a look at that sketch command. Let's dive straight in. You're going to find the sketch command up here on your menu bar at the top left hand corner. And it's that nice little squarey thing there with the green plus on it. This creates sketches, pure and simple. Everything inside Fusion starts with a sketch. You create a 2D representation via a sketch and extrude that into a 3D object. You could be drawing the shape of a tenon on the end of a piece of wood. You extrude it to make the tenon 3D tenon. You could be looking at a mortise on a piece of wood. You would sketch the mortise. You would extrude it down to make the mortise. Dovetails, anything like that, all will start with sketches. The end panel for a cupboard will start as a 2D sketch and would extrude it to make the final piece of wood. So sketches are really the lifeblood of fusion. Create sketch, use sketch mode to create basic geometry profiles that define the design. First, select a construction plane, then create lines, arcs or points and use dimensions to constrain the boundaries. So that's the process that we use. We create a plane, we define the sketch, we constrain the sketch. That's what you do with sketches, those three simple steps. Let's have a look at that. So we'll start off by clicking on the sketch, create sketch button at the top. Now you can see straight away, it brings up these orange squares here in the center of your screen. Those orange squares represent a different face on a three dimensional cube. If you come up to your top right hand corner, you can see the cube. The cube's got a top, it's got a front, it's got a right. And if you turn that round, look at my screen in the center, you can see that rotating with that screen. The cube's got a back, it's got a bottom, and it's got a left. Click on the home button to take you back to that initial view. So the first thing that you're going to tell Fusion is what face do you want to sketch on? If I go to this sketch, I'm sketching on the front of my object. If I come to this the sketch on here, I'm sketching on the top of my object. And if I come here, I'm sketching on the right of my object. So a lot of where you sketch depends on what you're wanting to do. If I wanted to draw the right hand panel on a cupboard or a sideboard, I would select the right hand plane, that one there. If I want to draw the front of, I don't know, maybe a frame for a kitchen cupboard, I would select the front. If I want to sketch top down, maybe to draw a tabletop, looking down from the top, I will select the top. So what is it that you want to draw? Now once you've decided that, it's no harder than clicking on one of these orange things. Now these orange things are known as construction planes inside Fusion. So let's go ahead and do a top down view, click. Now this will bring me into the sketch plane and you can tell that because my items over the top have changed. And as always, you can see I can create something, I can modify something, I can constrain it, I can inspect it, etc. So it's a standard thing you can do, just that your things are different. So in create, I can draw a line or a curve, I can do squares or rectangles, I can do circles, I can do splines, I can do mirrors, and I can strain things by giving things dimension. Let's do something really, really simple and create a tabletop. Here's my tabletop, it's a two point rectangle. Click on that. Now look at my cursor, you can see against my cursor now, it's got that small rectangular object next to my arrow there, and you can see I've got a crosshair at the end of my arrow. The crosshair is obviously where your sketch is going to start, and you know that when you sketch, you're going to draw a rectangle because that's the tool that you selected. Just escaping from that, come back into the rectangle too. Now have a look at this grid. Now this grid is telling you where you are in space. Now in the 3D world, everything is referenced by an X, Y and Z axis. If you look at the cube, I've got a green axis, it's the Y axis. I've got a red axis, which is the X axis, and a blue axis, which is the Z axis. This point where those three lines intersect is known as a zero point. That is the origin point, and that's defined as zero Y, zero X, and zero Z. And that's important because when you're sketching things, everything needs to be referenced back to a point. The obvious point is 0y, 0z and 0x. That's where I start all my sketches. There might be reasons not to do that and we can talk about those in the future. But for now, good basic practice, start at the origin point. Let's come back into our two point rectangle. Now watch my cursor. When I come down, bang, to see it? My cross changes to 
a little blue square and that's showing me that my starting point has now snapped into the origin. Click on the origin, drag up, I've now got a square or a rectangle in this case, sorry. Now you can see that some dimensions automatically appear, 49.923 millimeters in our case, and 98.846 millimeters on cost of length. You can type in anything, so let's make that 65 millimeters high, pressing the tab key on my keyboard. Now let's make that 100 long, bang. That's now given me a sketch at 65 millimeters, 100 millimeters, that's all referenced to the zero point in space and time. And if you just rotate that forward, you can see that it is actually drawn flat on that plane that we spoke about. So it's a 2D representation. I'm going to press Ctrl and Z and just delete and undo that rectangle. An alternative way of constraining that, again, two point rectangle into my origin, map out the square. And rather than type dimensions in this time, I'm just going to press the left button and that has drawn me a rectangle, but I've not given it any sizes. And if you just escape and come out of the drawing tool, the rectangle tool, you can see I've got two blue lines and two black lines. Now a black line means it's constrained. Fusion knows where it sits and, it's, and more or less its size. If it's blue, Fusion's not really sure where it sits. So I can highlight the blue line and now I can drag it and I can resize it. The reason these are black is because that corner is constrained to the origin and because it's a square rectangle that will always be on the green plane and that will always be on the red player. But these blue ones don't know where they are. Now this is where the sketch dimension tool comes in. Create sketch dimensions for sketch geometries. Use dimensions to control the size or position of sketch objects. Fantastic. So I can come in with my sketch geometry, highlight that curve, left click and just drag it up. And now I can get a command that says how long do I want that line to be. I want that line to be 100 millimeters long. I'm still in that tool, you can see there next to my cursor, I've still got that same symbol next to my cursor, so I know I'm still in the um, dimensioning tool. And I can come down, select this line, drag that one out and say I want you to be, oh, 100 as well. And when you press return, everything is now constrained. You can see that all my lines are now black and I can't move these lines anymore. They are now all locked together through dimensions, everything locked into this bottom origin area and that's it that's how simple sketches are you use it to define a something on a plane the plane you want to choose is the one um, that makes most sense to the thing that you're building in our case we've got a square tabletop select the plane draw the shape constrain the shape and that's a very very quick look at how you use sketches and then once you've finished that you come out of the sketch by the clicking on the finished sketch up here or clicking on the finish sketch here on the sketch palette. That takes you back to your original screen that you will recognize from where we started. And you've now ended up in the middle of your screen with a 2D object that's 100 millimeters square. And that's ready for the next activity, which is probably giving it some thickness. That's all I wanted to do in this one, short and sharp looking at sketch tool and how you use it. Next episode, I'm going to look at the Extrude tool and how we can now give some width and dimensions. See you then.